PCOS stands for polycystic ovarian syndrome. It's a very common hormonal disorder. In fact, one in 10 women probably have it in oh, the United wow. States. For this past month, I've been working out every single day. And the devil is trying to test me. This has been such a journey. It's all about education. It's all about learning what it is and how to improve your overall quality of life. The hallmarks of the disease are irregular periods and elevated levels of testosterone that can manifest in one of two ways. Either you have symptoms, so you have the hair and acne. So about a year and a half ago, I had noticed that I wasn't getting my period every single month. At first I thought it was my birth control, so I kind of went off of it, still wasn't getting it, and so I thought it was stress because I was graduating from college, I was getting ready to move to LA. When everything kind of settled down, I still wasn't getting it. I went to the doctor one day and was just getting a normal checkup and she had noticed that I had hair on my chin and she said, oh, you probably have PCOS. So for the next month, I'm going to be meeting a women's health specialist, other women who have PCOS and a doctor who specializes it in women's health and pretty much doing 360 on my lifestyle. Is it treatable? Is it curable? It's not curable per se. You can do things to treat it in terms of just actually you doing stuff with your body. I read that you kind of reversed your PCOS with holistic practices. I was able to reverse my diagnosis in about four months through focusing on digestion and building blood. Since we're only doing a month long kind of trial, you set up a special program for me. Mm -hmm. What does that consist of? So your program is going to consist of a supplement routine. So you're going to have detox, cleanse the kidney, liver, and bowel. You're going to have a candida cleanse. We're going to do it with the apple cider vinegar. And then you're going to go into foods to eat, foods to avoid. So some of those foods are going to be carbonated drinks, processed food, <laughs> alcohol, <laughs> high levels of caffeine. My heart is like breaking. <laughs> This is my last night of drinking before I start my health plan tomorrow. We got some wine, we have some food. Let the shenanigans begin. Why don't we go ahead and do that ultrasound right now and so I can actually show you what the ovaries look like. Automatically assumed that ultrasounds, you know, you have the jelly, the petroleum, and then you have the little machine and it goes around your uterus and your belly and then boom. But knowing that there's something that actually goes inside of you to see things that are happening on the inside, that's crazy to me and I didn't know that was a thing. You're gonna feel a little bit of pressure. You okay? Yeah. Women with PCOS, they have tons of these little follicles. They're all really small. I don't see a dominant follicle that looks like you're gonna ovulate and they're all kind of just ringing the outside. Your ovaries have the classic appearance of someone with PCOS. When I met with Dr. Bendixson, it was extremely overwhelming. All of these things that I didn't really know about PCOS and it was a little scary and I was just kind of like, oh God. And then getting a vaginal ultrasound and seeing my cysts and my ovaries and then learning that I had fibroid, that was the validation that this is real life for me now. The diagnosis is truly the crossroads because then you are able to say, do I want to treat this naturally or do I want to treat the symptoms and go with what the doctor wants to give me? I can only go to specific people who take my insurance or else it's going to cost an arm and a leg. I ended up going to one who was close to my job, told him, oh, I was recently diagnosed with PCOS. He walked outside, took out some generic ass birth control, and then was like, take this and you'll be fine, and watch what you eat. It was so frustrating. I'm already like scared. You have these symptoms and then they're telling you, oh, like I can cause diabetes and uterine cancer. And I walked out of that doctor's office feeling so defeated. It took me five doctors to get answers about this. Don't settle for one answer. Figure it out for yourself if you have to. It was important for me to meet with other women who have PCOS because I have a great support circle. I have a great support group, but nobody else has PCOS. They say it takes a village to raise a child. And I think coming into this and just realizing and being diagnosed with it that I have it, I feel like a child and I felt like I needed my village to raise me. So I'm gonna make my apple cider vinegar drink. It's awful. But you know what? It's gonna make me feel better. It can't really be something that you just follow to lose the 20 pounds that you've gained with yeah. it. It has to be for the rest of your life and that's intimidating. There's certain things that when I eat, I notice my body kind of imbalance immediately. Like mm -hmm. sugar for instance. So we're waiting for the shuttle and the devil is trying to test me. They smell so <laughs> chocolatey and good. I learned the first week that your mind has control over a lot of things and so I kept telling myself this is good for me, this is healthy, I'm gonna get used to it. Anytime I crave something, I would just drink water. Do you recommend 
any specific physical activities. Yeah, I don't recommend high intensity workouts. Walking for an hour a day is really, really good. I've been working out every single day and one of the beauties behind it is that I get to experience new places. Right now we're hiking in Solstice Canyon in Malibu. I don't know if I've lost weight, that's not really my goal. My goal is to just feel good. So we get lunch on Mondays and Wednesdays and we had pizza. Okay, can't eat that. Luckily though, they had salad, but so I ended up just taking like a bunch of cucumbers. This is literally what my fridge consists of kale, Brussels sprouts, some type of salad stuff, carrots, eggs, avocados, ground turkey. Look at me. Sweet potatoes at first were kind of just like another food for me. And then by week three, it was like, oh, I'm gonna treat myself and have a sweet potato. And like, all my friends would be like, that's not treating yourself. A glass of wine is treating yourself. So we have some cauliflower with drizzled olive oil, salt. And then we have all the ingredients to create the hummus. These things ended up becoming like treats for myself eventually because my body was getting used to the idea of feeding like all of these good proteins it's actually not that bad. Mm -hmm. You want to walk through life with the confidence that you are the HBIC, head bitch in charge. Until something happens with your body and you're like, oh, I have to do a complete 360. And so you do, and then you're kind of like, I'm gonna cheat since my body thinks that it can control me. And then it reminds you, actually, no, you're just walking through this thing called life for me. And so I ended up drinking. I don't have the hangover, but I do feel crappy. And it made me realize how much I don't miss like the aftermath of drinking. So I came home a little early from work today because I'm feeling super, super crappy. My stomach hurts. I have a headache, but I'm thinking that maybe I'm gonna get my period soon. I came to realize that a lot of the reason why we're not actually getting our period is because we don't have the nutrients in our body based on not eating properly or supplementing properly to produce enough blood to actually have our body be able to be like, okay, I'm gonna give you a period. Got my period. I thought like, oh, when I do get my period eventually, hopefully A, it'll be regular and B, hopefully I won't be upset, but I was actually like very happy because I didn't get my period last month or the month before that. I thought that I would have to go on all of these like pills and medications and stuff. And you know, all I'm really doing is taking my birth control, working out and eating healthy. Every week I've had to do an apple cider vinegar face mask. Your face is gonna smell like apple cider vinegar. So I suggest doing this before a shower. Lay back flat on the ground with your feet elevated for 10 minutes, bye. And this is what your face is supposed to look like. Cleopatra. Hmm, maybe not so much, but I do look like a ray of sunshine. People are Snapchatting me and they're like, what are you using? Your skin is so clear all of a sudden. And I'm like, I'm using Nicole Granado's essential oils, healthy eating, minding my business, working out and drinking this water. That's it. So as soon as I found out about PCOS, I went into Facebook and I typed it in and some of them have upwards of like 60,000 members. Whoa. So you're constantly hearing other people's stories. You're hearing symptoms that they have. So you can go in there and say, okay, this is what I'm experiencing right now. Is this normal? Is anyone else going through this? Is this a part of the condition? And within minutes, you'll have 30 comments oh of my God. what it is or what it isn't. It's almost like there's not enough resources for us. So we make, we're making our own all together. Oh my God, can you add me? Yeah, <laughs> I will. I look at what I've been through and I look at my story and I think it's for a purpose. It's, yeah. it's to help somebody else and to let them know you're not alone. This has been such a journey and it's been so exhausting. In the entire time, I felt like I was so alone. To talk to these women who not only gave me hope, were so realistic about their symptoms and then invited me to these safe spaces where thousands and thousands of other women have PCOS, gave me so much hope and it was so liberating. And it felt like a weight was lifted off of my shoulders. If you're having symptoms like acne or hair growth, don't just assume that it's you. If you have irregular periods, don't assume that that's normal. Those are things that you should be talking to your gynecologist about because those things, they may or may not be related to PCOS, but it's possible and if they are, they're treatable. If I could have a conversation with myself before I was diagnosed, I would tell myself to listen to my body a lot earlier. I would tell myself that, you know, when my body says that something is going on this drastically because I'm not getting my periods every month, I'm getting excessive weight in 
such short time to go to a doctor. And then if I walk out of that doctor's office feeling defeated because I feel like they didn't give me the answers, don't stop going to doctors until you find the answer.